Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today we have a look at the 1776 bourbon. Yeah, I think I've already had a few bottles on my cask here. And I think I've had the 1776 rye, which is one of the, the toughest, roughest, spiciest ryes there are on the market. I think I have it somewhere down there in the back, but I can't remember where. And this here is now the bourbon, so it must contain at least 51% corn. But according to the company, um, they have 38% rye, which is incredibly high. Usually a bourbon doesn't contain more than, let's say, 10% rye. Usually they go for five, six, seven, eight, somewhere around there, but they go for 38. So it's probably not going to be the typical bourbon and it's going to be more of a, a rye style whiskey. And uh, I've done a bit of research and I found out that the brand 1776 is the oldest brand on the market. And turns out the 1776 is not the declaration, it was not called 1776 because of the Declaration of Independence and America and all that kind of stuff, but it was it was founded in 1776 and it just happened to uh, coincide with the Declaration of Independence. But nevertheless, they still know Declaration of Independence is the, the major theme in 1776, not the James E. Pepper <laughs> brand registration. So they have born with the Republic and they have the, the divided snake that's cut into pieces with all these states of the, I think it were 13 colonies, aren't there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight colonies? I always thought there were 13. I don't know. I'm not American, so so um, it's not the the hundred proof version. I think there are still bottlings out there with a hundred proof, fifty percent ABV. Uh, this here is the forty six percent ABV uh, version, so it's that's a bit more drinkable. Fifty percent is always a bit rough, and if you then have thirty eight percent rye content, it'll be just an explosion of uh, of flavor. So this here is a bit of a uh, more enjoyable, more drinkable uh, version, but I still gonna think it's gonna be an explosion of um, of flavors. The brand was founded in 1776 and it remained three generations in the hands of the uh, Pepper family. Or was it called Pepper? Yeah, James E. Pepper, the Pepper family, and then it was sold off and now belongs to the uh, Georgetown Trading Company. So a bit of a background here in uh, for for this whiskey. Mm. Mm. It smells like a bit of a normal bourbon with a slight rye inf influence. So it's yeah, it's a bit more hefty, a bit more spicy. It smells a bit like a rye bread. In recent history, I've, I've gotten a bit more into bread baking, so I'm, I really find more similarities with, with bread now. So, <laughs> don't mind me if I talk more about the flavors of bread now in the next videos. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think pretty much everybody would uh, consider this a rye whiskey in a blind, blind tasting. Um, whereas the nose was still a bit bourbon style with a rye influence, this here now has a hefty, hefty, hefty rye influence. Still, you feel a bit of a bourbon influence in the back, so it's uh, more of a, a sweet rye. So you have that sweetness in the back with the, all the intense, spicy, rough and tough flavors at the front mm, that, that I considered with the rye and uh, a nice sweet flavor in the background. And the 46% are, are pretty enjoyable. Mm -hmm. mm. It's still pretty smooth when you just uh, have it in your mouth. Um, 
just as you swallow you realize there's just a lot of a lot of spiciness and flavors going on it's not so hard on the the oakiness so there's a little oakiness going on but there's more cloves pepper dark chocolate rye bread mm. that's the flavors that you're gonna find in the 1776 bourbon so if the 1776 rye is a bit too hefty for you maybe you go for the bourbon still a very rye influenced whiskey but um very drinkable very very enjoyable so yeah thank you very much for watching if you found this video interesting then please feel free to share it with your friends and see you next time